Shalom, Yasharala, Shalom. It's the brother Ash Ibar coming back in the spirit, giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and a mighty Shalom to the hopeful elect scattered across the four winds of the earth, man. Peace and blessings be unto you. And hey, man, every single day we seeing the perverseness, we seeing the defilement, we seeing the wickedness of this land, so called America, the United States of America, man. Mystery Babylon. I want to read the scripture before I get into this video. This is the book of Isaiah 24 and 1. It says, Behold, Yahweh make it the earth empty and make it waste, and turns it upside down and scatter it abroad, the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with their mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for Yahweh has spoken this word. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. And this is what happened in the past with our people back when we were dwelling in the land. And ultimately, the Lord had to, you know, bring harsh judgment. And this judgment that's going to come upon the people, especially the vast majority of our people, is well-deserved and is necessary, man. The Lord is going to smite this place and burn it to the ground because that's the only way you're going to be able to purge this. You know, you have to understand the things of old are going to happen in these days. And one thing that you brothers is going to start to see is the sexual perversion, the sexual whoredom the sexual fornication that our people are going to engage in and just the spiritual the physical indecency of our people is going to come on the scene more and more and more i had seen this again i was scrolling on my other instagram page and some a chick that i used to know from three four years ago she had reposted this and saying i can't believe this is real so i clicked on the video and i'm in the middle of eating lunch at work and i couldn't believe it for those of y'all brothers who don't know this is something called la sip and stroke is a true experience so y'all understand strip clubs, y'all understand brothels, but now it's gotten so perverse that people are opening up restaurants and opening up seats of eatery where you can sip on some wine and then sip on some schlangalang, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I just want, let's just get into the video. Let's just let's just watch the video, bro, because it, it, you know, it's crazy to me. But it's not crazy ultimately. When you understand prophecy, you understand it's not crazy. So y'all see it, y'all see it. You got a male stripper, you got a male dude, Jake, Jake man, Jake woman, Jake woman, she on her hot girl summon, you know, and y'all gotta understand the spirit of the liberal woman is a spirit of pansexuality. So at any moment, whether she's married, whether she has boyfriend, whether she has kids, if you put her in the right environment and you want her to have fun, she's gonna put herself in these type of environments. Think about um, before women would get married, what would they have? Um, I forgot what it's called. Not, not the, I think it's the bachelorette party or something like that. I forgot. But even, even when you look at that, the bachelorette party or what is it called? It's when you get married and, you know, your wife, she essentially, she goes on like a thing where she's with her girls. What do they do? They bring a male stripper. They go out and they essentially do whatever their heart desires because you have to remember the Lord is putting in a perverse spirit on the people. And if you are a Gentile in the spirit, if you are a Jake and you follow after the ways of the heathen, the Lord will put that same perverse spirit that he puts upon all the other Gentile nations in regards to the aspect of them not being able to control their members, them going out, having sex with a man, having sex with a woman, doing things with your animals. And it's going to get stronger and stronger with each and every passing day. Let's actually go back to the book of Isaiah. We're going to go to chapter 19 and we're going to go down to verse 14. It says, Yahweh has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to error in every work thereof as a drunken man staggered in vomit. And what is that perverse spirit? The spirit of revelry, the spirit of feminism, the spirit of haughtiness, pride, the spirit of endorsing wickedness wherever you go with, you know, the alphabet community, 
with child sacrifice, which is essentially abortion, which is a man, I mean, a woman over a man, you know, worshiping after these false idols. And so what, the, what does the Lord do? Whatever man sows, whatever man reap. So essentially the Lord is allowing the vast majority of Jakes out there to mingle with that perverse spirit. And is that spirit of Satan, man? So when you look at something like this, look at the comments. This, this comment is in particular, and this is Lyra Galore, 4.2 million followers, She's probably an IG thought, whatever you want to call it. And she says, every day we stray further and further from the Lord's grace. And you know, it's funny, there's a lot of truth in humor because she knows what she's saying. She's saying that this wicked ass society is going further and further down the drain and further and further down into the wicked ways that how it was before. But she has the crying face like, I know it's happening, but I don't care. And let's go into the replies, right? A lot of y'all can't take a joke, blah, 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 blah. Speak on it, disgusting. Because anybody with true moral values, anybody who, who truly believes in the Bible, essentially what they're, what they're trying to say unto you is that either one or two things gonna happen. Either I'm gonna go down with Babylon and I'm gonna enjoy my revelry until the day that the Heavenly Father burns it, or you're gonna stand for something and you are potentially gonna die for something. Because we are gonna come into a time of what it's going to be like in ancient Greece and in ancient Rome, where if you follow the Heavenly Father, you didn't believe in the wicked things that are coming upon the society, your life was taken, your, your freedom was taken. And as they continue to show you what they really venerate, that persecution is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the first person who ever spoke that, that I listened to was Chronicles of Judah. So that's why it is important for y'all brothers to understand the things that happened in times past. So that way they can show you and give you a foreshadowing of what's to come. Because in this society, in the United States of Pan, in Pan we trust, the things that, that essentially Pan and all those other guys allowed the people to do, you know, the people who, who believed in them, what they followed is going to come back. I want to get this in Deuteronomy. Because y'all brothers got to understand, a oh man, you selling you selling your sausage, bro, that's going off. It says, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. And when you look at the transliteration of this scripture, it's not literally talking about just a regular whore, but it's also talking about being a male or a female prostitute. So essentially, a woman who is a prostitute, a spiritual prostitute, or a man who is a male prostitute, he sells his body for services, whether it's on Pornhub, whether it's um, being, a, um, you know, like the male strippers, things like that, that's going off. And especially if a man is selling his parts to another man for money, you're going all the way off because you commit two abominations. You're selling your body for sex, you uh, <laughs> committing spiritual, you committing fornication, and a lot of times when you go into environments like this, where you out in a space like that, quiet is kept. A lot of them are committing spiritual whoredom. Like if you brothers will go on Instagram, you'll see a woman who's clearly a harlot. And she'll say how she's a mini Afro deity or she's a mini, um, I mean, what's another another goddess that we could think about? Um, Hathor or mini this or mini that. She's a goddess in her name. She's calling herself a spiritual harlot, a spiritual prostitute. And if any man were to deal with that woman, essentially you're going off because one thing that you have to understand is that the spiritual resonance of sex can transfer. So if you're dealing with a woman and she claims to be a, a sexual goddess and you were to have sex with her, you're essentially committing spiritual fornication with the heavenly father because your member that goes into her has a spiritual linkage. And if you see that woman as a deity, as a, a small incarnation of Hathor or, uh, you know, all them other female goddesses that were practiced of old, then you have committed spiritual fornication, bro. So y'all have to understand whenever people participate in things like that, it's more than just having random sex with a stranger, but it, it, it's, it's so many different things in one. And ultimately, a lot of those brothels and, and things that go on, you know, in India and China, and they go on in America, go to Vegas and you'll see what I'm talking about. But all throughout the land, these things are going to become more and more common. So things like sex trafficking, child human sex trafficking, bestiality, things like that, they're going to go from behind the curtain and they're going to be revealed unto the people. And you're going to see people blatantly do these things. And that's why I'm doing this, because this is a sign that we're headed more and more into those times.
So let's read Leviticus 19 and 29. It says, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. And you have to understand, what does the scripture in Jeremiah say? You are my battle axe. You are my weapons of war. So when the Lord's weapons become corrupted, when they become reprobate silver, when they become dwelt in darkness, the same weapon that the Lord can use to bless other nations, he's going to also use to curse other nations. So the more wickedness that the vast majority of Jake men and women go into, they're going to pollute the land. And a lot of times the pollution comes through sexual acts. That's why the scripture says, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. So when women are harlots, when women cheat on their man, they have multiple men and they defile their flower inside, it defiles the land. But also when, when men are male prostitutes, when men are going crazy and men first, men don't know how to understand and control their sexual urges, it's the same thing with them. Even though the scripture is talking about women, you can also apply it in regards to a man being a male prostitute. That's all the way off. I also want to go to the book of um, Isaiah chapter 6 real quick. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 6. I'm going to go down to verse 11. It says, Thus then said I ye how how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without men in the land utterly be destroyed. Let's actually go up to verse 8. It says, Also I heard the voice of Yahweh saying, Whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Then he said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people and hear you indeed, but understand not, and see you indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy, heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. So ultimately, essentially, when the Heavenly Father spoke to Isaiah and told him to prophesy and preach unto the people, the Lord would make their hearts heavy and would make their, their eyes shut. He would blind them from seeing the, the error of their ways. And ultimately, the reason why us brothers, we can see how wicked this is, but they can't is because essentially the Lord doesn't give the blessing of spiritual discernment and, and what's right and what's wrong because he doesn't want to deal with them. He doesn't want them to get it. And ultimately, all of us brothers are in a similar role as to Lot because Lot had to deal with this and endure this. And with us living in modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, it's no different. I follow a dude, y'all brothers can check him out. He got a page called Strong Successful Male and they did what? He goes into different aspects of stories that happen every day. People come in every day about, you know, their wife sleeping with their brother, their wife sleeping with their cousin, their wife sleeping with their best friend, their wife wanting to in engage in threesomes, their wife wanting to have an open relationship. Did not Yahweh Shah said that it would be as the time of, of, of the days of Noah, that it would be the times where men would, where men and women were given in marriage and they would be wife swapping and things like that. So that's another telltale sign that the end is near. Now, going back into 2 Peter 2 and 5, it says, Yahweh spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, fetched with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And I just want to get into this aspect because you brothers are going to have to endure this and see these things and ultimately ultimately become numb to it. Because when you first see and you first understand, you're like, damn, you really doing this? Are you serious? But ultimately you get to a point where like, hey. Do what you got to do. Keep playing with the Lord and watching the Lord burn your ass up, man. Now, I want to go to Ezekiel, I mean, Salaki, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. It says, the thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is in regards to the aspect of pansexuality. Because you can't really sit here and say that this is pansexuality. But this is just a tip of the iceberg of what can actually happen with an orgy. Because if you got this going on right now, all the other women gonna get excited. There's gonna be other men there. And essentially you see one woman do it, one man kissing the sausage and drinking wine and kissing the sausage and drinking wine. All the other people in the background, because there's around 40 to 50 people in there. And it's gonna lead into this. Now let's go into this. What is pansexuality? For those of y'all brothers who don't understand the spirit of pan, this is what it is. It says pansexual has root in the Greek word pan, meaning all or every. 
and is often described as falling under the bisexual bisexuality umbrella, along with labels like omnisexual, polysexual, bi curious, queer, and sexually fluid. And y'all brothers gotta be very careful when you look at these women on Be Okay, bro, and just in general, because I promise you. One day the woman is, pan is is lesbian, the next day she's dealing with a man, the next day she's dealing with a man who deals with other men, the next minute the woman is dealing with a man who's gay, but he's open. You gotta look at a lot of them them dudes like YG. YG is dealing with Brittany Renner and he got her pregnant because he, he's an idiot, right? But ultimately, a few months back, YG and, and Tiger was dressed in drag. YG and Tiger was dressed... <laughs> as females look it up it was in like a lambo or a ferrari so you don't think the same man who on a song in the dark said that how did i get on the charts i had to be face down you know what i'm saying that he's not dealing with an, with another man and then he gonna deal with another woman all of these people are pansexual and they're essentially what they're doing is they're allowing that pansexual ideology that a lot of these high-ranking Edomites and just the vast majority of people who are in the occult push onto their members, they're pushing it onto the majority of the masses and they're desensitizing each and every generation to accept this lifestyle. You couldn't 20, 30 years ago say you like men and women and dogs and cats and I I love I'm a I'm a sapio sapien where I'm attracted to knowledge. <laughs> so you attracted to all type of different knowledge? What if you think a horse got knowledge? What do you think of, you telling, you saying a dog is smart. Next thing you know, you dealing with the dog. You attracted to the dog. You attracted to a smart woman and a smart man. That's dysfunctional, that's chaotic, that's out of order. And the Lord is gonna allow recompense to come upon all these people, right? It says how many, and I, I'm not even gonna get into this, but I really wanna get into this image right here. Because these are, this is, how do I put this the right way? This is an ancient Greek and ancient Roman ritual of you know a pansexual orgy a bacchanalian orgy bacchanalian rites if y'all brothers look up the meaning of christmas christmas is essentially for saturn all you where for the god saturn men would come give gifts exchange exchange in, in in pleasantries and essentially they would have sex with one another now in this this is men and women and one thing that y'all brothers could also look at if you look at the video power by kanye it's like a one minute and 50 second video if you look at that video, that has a lot of the ancient Greek and Roman customs and what he follows and what he believes. And he was essentially recreating one of these orgies, but it wasn't literally an orgy. It was just all these different aspects coming in as one. But when you see things like what you see on Instagram, and more importantly, you see Jake's coming into that, they're practicing a heathen custom. I know it doesn't look and seem as if it is, but when you go out and you drink and you eat and you also have sex, you're completely out of order. And essentially you're following after the same ways as, as the back is and as Pan, because these things happen behind the scenes, especially in LA, especially in Hollywood. That's why it's not conducive for a man to be in those lands if the Lord doesn't, if the Lord doesn't want you. I highly recommend y'all leave from them sinners because it's all type of wickedness. Now there's wickedness wherever you go, but especially in California, bro, it's on a whole nother level. And why do they do these things, do you might ask? Because they following after, again, ancient Greek and Roman gods. This being Pan, you know? So if you call yourself a follower of Pan, you gonna have the same spirit. So I wanna end it with some scriptures and then I'm gonna just shut this off. But you brothers have to understand why the word is so important, especially in these times that we're coming into. Let's read Galatians chapter five, verse 19. Let's read verse 18, it says, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. So if you're led with the spirit, the Lord won't condemn you to all the, the, the transgressions that you have because you're imperfect and following the law, which is why you have to be in Yahweh Shah. Galatians 5 and 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. And one key aspect is lasciviousness. What is lasciviousness? Let's look it up real quick. Strong's G seven sixty six, as El Gaya, as El Gaya, as El Gaya, unbridled lust, excess, licentiousness, lasciviousness, wantonness, shamelessness, insolence, and them, and that brother and that sister don't got no shame. They they excited by like, oh man, you really did that. You really gotta suck your slang lane. Why she was getting getting a two piece two piece dinner <clears throat> and some wine, bro? That's what you do at your house with your wife. You keep it to yourself. You want to do that 
in the middle, in the middle, okay, you know, do it, but watch what's gonna happen to you, bro. So essentially, one of the key aspects of the flesh is lasciviousness, and we're coming to a time where people have no moral, they have no standard, and they essentially don't care. Getting back into this scripture, first Peter. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 3. It says, For in the times past of our life may suffice us to have rocked the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. So when you go into these different environments, man, you're allowing your flesh to feed off of those spirits. Lasciviousness, excess of wine, which is excess of sin, not having any type of a fear of the Lord to stop what you're doing and really look and evaluate what you're doing. Attending these Roman and these Greek banquets, which in modern day America is all these mini festivals, the concerts, you know, you know, getting into that turn up lifestyle, right? But let's also go to Colossians chapter three. We'll go down. Colossians chapter three, verse five, it says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So Paul specifically said to mortify your members and keep your body away from the wicked lust of this society. And I want to also go, I'm going to read two more scriptures and I'm going to end it. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We we'll go down to verse 13. It says, Meat for the belly, meat is for the belly and the belly for meats, but Yahweh shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for Yahweh and Yahweh for the body. And Yahweh raised, and God has raised, has both raised up Yahweh Shai and will also raise up us by his own power. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Hamashiach? Shall I then take the members of Hamashiach and make them the members of a harlot? Yahweh forbid. What know you not? that he which is joined to a harlot is one body. For two saith he shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication, every sin that a man doeth without the body, but he that committed fornication sins against his own body. And that's why you brothers gotta be careful of that Jezebel spirit. You gotta be careful of that of the temptation that's gonna come upon you, because a lot of y'all brothers is working to control your lust. A lot of y'all is working to control your lust demon. So when you constantly feed it and you constantly move in this society, you got to be very careful and very weary because them demons know what you can and can't do. And them demons can easily come upon you. And for the vast majority of our people, they got a heavy spirit of fornication, heavy spirit of pansexuality, a heavy spirit of perverseness. But let's read verse 19. It says, what know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of your how and are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify your how in your body and in your spirit, which are the most high. And this is the last one that I'm going to get. Because that, that same event, this is just read it. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21. It says, Unless when I come again, my power will humble me among you, and that I shall be well many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanliness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. So you have to understand that in regards to the church of Corinth, the church of Corinth is just a modern day amalgamation of what brothers is going through living in America. Corinth could kind of be like the equivalent of having, yeah, how much I having a church in a, in a smack dab of LA, bro. All type of crazy wickedness be happening there. Different groups, diverse land, you know, that, that revelry spirit. You gotta be very weary and very careful, bro. Cause that spirit can easily latch on you. And if the Lord condemns you of that, he's not approving, he's not approving of anybody who engages in them type of behaviors, man. So y'all brothers move with, with knowledge, with wisdom, discernment, and be very weary and understand that the times we're living in, because this is gonna be commonplace very, very soon, you know? And we see it right here. <laughs> so hey. But I wanna give all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashima Mashiaki Hawashai. And peace and blessings unto the hopeful Lex, the brother Ash Abad, signing out.